Hello and welcome to the video series on Math Lit Paper 2, November 2024. Um, so as always, let's just read through the instructions. Always make sure that you have all the questions, that you have all the annexures. I always make sure I have the annexures because it's easy to kind of lose one of those in the mix. Start each question on a new page. Students often forget that. Then um, show all your calculations, all your final answers. Um, must be appropriate according to the context. So that generally means you must round off to two decimal places. And then obviously show your units. It's a very easy way to lose marks and we don't want to be losing marks for silly things like that. So let's jump into question one. Now question one is generally somewhere where you can score quite well. But when it comes to this particular question one, you have to know your definitions, right? So if you haven't learned your definitions, this is your reminder to please go learn your definitions because you don't want to be losing eight marks for easy peasy things. So let's just read through this. Table one below shows a list of explanations and definitions of concepts used in mathematical literacy. So we have A to G, okay? So what I generally do with these questions is I go look at the definitions or the, the terms that were given because then when I'm reading through the definitions I kind of can think oh, okay does it link to any of these and it's just a little bit more efficient okay so it says use table one above and match an explanation or a definition with each of the concepts below write only the letter a to g next to the question numbers and then it just shows you how they want you to write it okay so we have capacity very important to understand capacity compared to volume North Elevation, Imperial System, and Area. Okay, so let's go through each of these. What I'm going to do is even for the definitions that are not applicable here, I'm going to give you the term just so that you can learn it. So a measuring system using meters, liters, and kilograms, right? So it's already told you it's a system. So you're thinking in your mind, mm, is it Imperial? Well, it's not. This one is the metric system. Okay, so important to note if that comes up um, in your test or in your exam in the next couple of days. Um, the amount of space occupied by an object, object you could be thinking, mm, capacity. Well, you'd be wrong because that is volume, right? Remember, volume is just the space and capacity. We'll look at that now because the definition is coming. So then it says a system measuring um, in inches, gallons and pounds. Now we're talking imperial system. So there right? That's the imperial system. Then it says the amount of space available to hold something. That is capacity, right? That's capacity. So it's the amount of space available to hold and volume is the space occupied by an object, object right? So think about it. Um, I always say to, to my students, think about the, the boot of a car, right? You, if you fill that up with water, right? Not that I think you should do that. If you fill it up with water, you'd be able to hold quite a lot of water. But now if I need to put boxes into the boot, those boxes will not be of the same volume as the water because I can't fit boxes exactly into that space, right? So we have this capacity versus volume. Very important because capacity is the realistic volume. Volume is saying, okay, if I put water in the space and water can fill every little corner, you know, but that's not always the case when you're putting something else in. Then we have the side of a building you see when facing south, so you are facing south. So if you are facing south, right, so you're over here and you facing south, right, that's going to be your north elevation, okay? So that's quite important because students often forget or get a bit confused by that because you'll see the next one, it says the side of a building you see when you are facing north. So when you are facing north, you're going to see the south side. Okay, so if I had a little house over here and then I'm facing it that way, I'd be looking at the north side. If I had a house over here, I'd be looking at the south side. So there's that element of um, you're facing this way, but the house is facing back at you, right? It's almost like um, if you look in the mirror, right? Then, last one. Um, the amount of space that is enclosed by the perimeter of an object. Now, by process of elimination, we know that has to be area. But please just make sure that you um, know that in your mind. Okay, so this is a very common first question for paper two. So go and learn your definitions. Don't mess up here. Okay, obviously you don't write it like this into your, into your book, right? Into your answer book. You're going to go like this. You're going to write much more neatly. Question one, 1.1. 1. 1. 
1.1, 1 1.2. It's probably best to actually leave a space between, but because these are only um, uh, little one one off um, letters, you can just write it like that. Be careful that you write your letters, letters carefully because you can see my E almost looks like a C. Don't be tempting fate there. Okay, let's look at the next question. Okay, so start off with definitions. We're now moving on to a little bit of volume. Um, and so let's see, well, it's not so much volume, measurement. So let's move on and see. Paving bricks are available in different shapes and sizes. Hexagonal, hexagonal means six sides. Paving bricks are made up of six equal triangles and will be used to cover a rectangular ground surface. Okay, so here's a sketch showing us the tile. Then here it's giving us a measurement. So here they give us length, height, and width. And here they're giving those those measurements, just note that they're in millimeters. And then they're showing you how the bricks would actually be laid, right? Which is quite important because you could lay them in different ways. So now we see how they're expecting it. And let's then look at the questions. So first question says, use the information above to answer the questions that follow. Okay, easy enough. 1.2.1, convert 220 millimeters to meters. Now, what I always do is I go millimeters, centimeters, then meters. Some students just do it all in one, but I think if you go peri uh, like systematically, it's a bit easier. So 220 divided by 10 gives me 22 centimeters, okay? Because that's how we get from millimeters to centimeters. Then we say, well, 22 divided by 100, and that is, that's how I get from centimeters to meters, is going to be 0 0.22 meters. Now, you'll be saying, oh, Molly, I can't do that in my head. Do it on your calculator, okay? I'm just doing it in my head because I um, I can do that type of math in my head, but do it in your calculator, right? Don't be tempting fate, as I keep saying. That seems to be my, my new phrase for the year. Okay, 1.2.2, choose from the options A, B, or C below the correct one that would be used to calculate the volume, right? of the hexagonal paving brick. So we know volume has to do with all three of my dimensions, right? It's going to be width, length, and height. So we can't be looking at something that doesn't incorporate all three because that doesn't make sense. So let's quickly just go through our three options and then choose the correct one. So volume equals six times area times height. Okay, area of a triangle. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. So. Here, I have six triangles, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that makes sense. So I'm adding all of those together, right? So I'm saying basically this whole top bit here, and then I'm timesing it by height. Like that seems actually pretty good, right? Because remember area already is going to be your length times width. So I'm taking all three of my dimensions into it. So I'm pretty happy with that one, but we must always look at the other options. So volume equals side length plus height plus width. Now we know that volume is not we don't add in volume, right? We multiply in volume. So this one we know, mm -mm, it's not given, right? Then let's look at C. Volume equals six times perimeter times height. Now, it's quite similar to the first one, except not area, right? So it's basically saying, if I add that plus that plus that plus that plus that plus that, so all those lengths, and then I times it by height. So it hasn't taken my width into consideration at all. So it can't be that one, right? Because it doesn't take all of my dimensions. So we say, no, 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 my answer is A, okay, and we're done, right? But you see how sometimes these questions, they're only two marks, but they actually require you to do a bit of thinking. So just be be systematic, right? So sometimes when you start, you're feeling a little bit uptight, but let's just go through this and make sure that we are doing things methodically. Last question for this video. Calculate the number of bricks needed for a single row along a length of two eight six zero millimeters okay so we know that the rows are set up like this right so we're going to have to take that measurement there and we're going to have to divide it by that measurement there now you could be saying well why well remember the width is 220 and the width we're saying that the length there is two eight six zero and so there would be the total length and we're going to split it into all these different ones right all these different tiles. So we're going to say 2860 and then we're going to divide it by 220. Okay, make sure when you're doing questions like this that you are working in the same unit, right? Um, because sometimes students will say meters and they'll divide it by millimeters and then it doesn't make sense because you always, always have to make sure that things are in the same 
unit. So this is both, they're both in millimeters. I'm just going to pop that into my calculator, 2860 divided by 220. Wonderful, say so 13. Don't just say 13 anything, right? It's not 13 anything, it's 13 bricks. Okay, and then we're done with this question. Let's move on.